This episode is sponsored by the WIVW channels and The Break Room, downtown's best spot for a hot lunch every business day. Well, we're out here at Lake Shawnee. We're setting up Winter Wonderland, and I'm here with my 10th grade biology <laughs> teacher. I don't know whether I should call you Sherry or Mrs. Lundry. Sherry. How are you doing? I'm good. It's good to see you. Hey, thanks for having us out here. Absolutely. Uh, this was something that, you know, I've done several years and driven through, and it's always wow. had a great time. And to have the opportunity to come out and check and see it being set up is really kind of spectacular. Yeah, how many years have we been doing this? This will be 16. 16 years? This will be the 16th really? year. Yep. So we're out here at Lake Shawnee Campground and this is a perfect location for it because there's obviously power spread out all around and that's right. obviously something you need and there's roads people can drive through. Right. So mm -hmm. how did the whole idea of this come together? 16 years ago, there was one of the founding families, some of the people who were on the board saw one of these in another location and Tark was looking for a fundraiser and they came up with the idea. So they started very small and we had a, one tunnel and a few displays that were leased and people came in and just kind of plopped them down and walked away and left it to be figured out by the Parks and Recs guys. So uh, since then it has grown. We don't lease anything. All of what you see here is owned by TARC. And um, many of them are constructed by the Topeka Foundry and Ironworks. Um, they that, are a huge that was, sponsor. That was my question. Uh, not, my next question was, with all of these displays, like is there a you know a place that just makes this stuff or do you have to invent this stuff? How no, does it come there together? actually are companies who make them and okay. you can purchase them. Uh, in, there are a number of them around the country. There's two or three really large companies that do it. They are rather expensive when you do it that way. We have a wonderful sponsor in the Topeka Foundry and Ironworks and they kind of take, have taken that over as their sponsorship and pet project for us so a lot of the things you see out here were built by them mm -hmm. we saw this uh, giant uh, snowman over here as we were setting it up here and you see all that you realize that there's it really is pretty you know precise yes absolutely yeah. they are phenomenal what they do down there and we give them ideas we show them pictures and then they take it from there and they are just incredible guys and, and they like doing it in their downtime and Jack Bybee who is at the foundry is very supportive of TARC and lets them do that in their downtime. And so it is a huge benefit for us that they love doing it. So they put all this stuff together. Do, how do they put the lights on as well? Or do you have, no, how does we that do happen? that ourselves. We, they build the actual steel pieces and, and make them what we want them. And then they bring them out here and volunteers, myself and Allison and volunteers actually work on putting the cord on, taping it on and putting the bulbs in the sockets. So um, it, it's, Kind of time consuming. How many volunteers does it take to put this thing together? Uh, just for setup? Yeah. For setup, we have, uh, there is one, two, there's about four volunteers who are here with us quite often. But then we have other groups that come out. We have the National Honor Society groups from Seaman and Shawnee Heights who come out and help us check the bulbs once we get everything up and running to see what bulbs are out, if we need to replace some, you know, if something's not working right. We They take nights and they go through and do that. So, uh, you know, it's probably upwards of around 100 volunteers wow. besides the Parks and Rec guys and the Department of Corrections who help actually do the grunt work of putting the displays up and wiring them so that they stay up and doing the electrical. So. Wow, and that, that in itself is, in the 16 years, obviously the, the bulbs, all of the, the stuff that we've, uh, we're seeing out here has changed and the technology has changed. How has that kind of affected this? The new technology in light bulbs are the C7 LED bulbs, and they require much less energy, much less electricity to run. So uh, we would like to switch over. They are more expensive, but they last a lot longer and use a lot less electricity. So they are a lot greener when we talk about technology. Mm -hmm. And what we found is we were running out of uh, electricity with the displays we had. So one of the things that we could do, it would take a small display, went from about four amps down to 1.8 amps by changing, just changing the types of, of wow. bulbs. So by doing that, we can add more displays as we go. And in talking about those bulbs and the LEDs, how many bulbs are, are there out here that are lit up with this? Well, our best estimate, well, we have counted as best we can, but we had a lot of volunteers helping us. Sure. So the accuracy can't be guaranteed. <laughs> uh, we know that there are more than 700,000 bulbs and that was as of 2011. And we've added some things since then. So so we were probably getting close, getting closer to 750,000 at this point. Wow, that's that's a lot of bulbs, especially when you're, you know, 
changing them out and looking at all kinds yes, of things. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I want to talk about what this has done for TARC. It is our largest fundraiser. We, we have two main fundraisers. We have a golf tournament in the summer and we have this uh, in the winter. And um, our best year, we raised $150,000. And uh, last year we raised 145. So it is. And one of the things about TARC uh, as a nonprofit in Shawnee County, we are very efficient with our money. Our admin cost is only about 10%. So 90% of what people donate to TARC goes right back into programming and supporting the folks that we serve. So it um, makes a big difference. It helps our budget a lot. Even though it doesn't sound like a lot, and when you look at our overall budget, without it, it would hurt. So. We, uh, we and just keep going. for folks who may not understand uh, what TARC is, you know, who you serve, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, your programming. TARC started in 1954. We're going to be 60 years old in February. And it started with a group of 32 parents who wanted something more for their child who had a developmental disability rather than to institutionalize them. And so they banded together and started the organization. And we since then have grown to, uh, we have a children's services division, we have an adult and senior services division, case management, self-determination, TARC Industries and Employment Services. And we serve individuals who have developmental, intellectual, and related disabilities. So anything that falls under those realms that's related to that, under those definitions, we, we provide services for them. Wow, very good. And this is their number one fundraiser out here, so folks need to come out for Christmas. What a great time to help an organization out. Okay. It's a Christmas time, really. Absolutely. And, and it's fun for the whole family. Uh, 16 years of going through here. Um, what What's new this year uh, out here? Well, you can watch for the new entrance sign, which is at East Edge and Croco Road. And it is a fabulous, newly designed arch and light display that welcomes you to Winter Wonderland. And it was designed and built by the Topeka Foundry and Ironworks this year for us. When you come in, if you guys haven't been here, there's like a radio that plays through your car, like it's all sequenced. And yes, yeah. it is. Uh, that is provided by WIBW Radio, okay. and it is a stream, and it also has some interviews or, or thank yous from our board members and persons that we serve, and some facts about TARC. So you can, once you drive in, and you tune your radio to that FM frequency, you can hear holiday music and facts about TARC and folks from TARC thanking you for coming out. 16 years ago, you know, I was only about 12, maybe five, five years old. I don't remember how old I was, <laughs> um, which to keep up with the lie, but, uh, <laughs> but I, I do remember like the first year and to see how much it's grown in that amount of time. This is, this has gotten pretty big. It has, because I believe I came out the first year. I was not involved back then, but um, when I came out the first year, there was maybe 10 or 12 displays in the tunnel, one of the tunnels that had the flashing lights, and that was about it. And then it started growing from there. And over the years, they've added so many new things, like the reindeer arch with the deer run jumping over the road, winter woods with all of the trees, um, you know, the religious scenes, and the snowflake tunnel. And, you know, it's just, you know, some of the most amazing things. And I know everybody's favorite is the dragon and the Viking ship that's in the water. <laughs> How uh, does that happen? <laughs> it's holiday magic. <laughs> uh, actually, my daughter, who you know, um, came out one of the very first years I was doing this and I needed something and she came out during setup. She happened to be in town and she came over and was upset with me. You, you ruined the illusion for me, mom. <laughs> and I said, I know, I'm so sorry. Because those of you who uh, know water and electricity really don't mix they very don't. well. That's, so that's... you don't want to put a display really in the water. Yeah. It is pretty cool how we do that. And, and it is an illusion, but it is everybody's favorite. And it's set close to the water and you view it across there. So it looks like it's in the water at night. So it's pretty fun. It's pretty cool stuff. I, I remember this is just the best event to come out and get in the holiday spirit. Because if you're not feeling Christmas, you certainly will when you pull out of here. I Absolutely. Remember they had like some uh, some glasses or Razzle something. Dazzle Razzle Dazzle glasses. Razzle Dazzle glasses. Make sure you get those yep, for the kids, right? They'll be available right? again this year. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is we have stuff. another promotion I guess I should maybe tell you a little bit about. Yeah. Diamonds by Design has come to us and they have a $5,400 $5, diamond ring that um, for suggested donation of a dollar, you can give us your information and on December, I think it's December 20th, we're going to draw for a winner of that ring and there'll be a picture of it at the gate and you can also uh, go to Diamonds by Design and buy your tickets for Winter Wonderland and also 
give a donation to be entered to win the ring too. So it's a pretty cool thing they're doing this year to help us out too. Well, folks, you need to come out here and check out Winter Wonderland. It's a wonderful fundraiser for Tark. You can see everything around us here in the daytime, but I I ensure, assure you it is much more impressive when it's at night, right? Absolutely, and that's my favorite time is the first time we turn the whole park on at night to check bulbs. It's like, you know, you see it, you're out here every day changing bulbs, putting the tape on the core, keeping it together, and then you come out the first night that we're going to check bulbs and the whole park gets turned on and you just kind of stand there and go, wow, it's pretty cool because it's always different. It, even though most of the displays are the same displays, they're in different places, we change the bulbs, it's just always a little bit different look, so it's always kind of fun that very first night. To really check it out, you need to load the kids up in the car, drive out to Lake Shawnee, and when does this thing open? We open to cars on November 27th, and the gate is a suggested donation of $10, and it's a suggested donation, but on November 22nd, you can come out and actually walk through, and that's like we were doing just now, and it is a $2 admission, suggested donation of $2, but if you, and with that, you get to walk through, and we will have donut holes and hot chocolate that are part of that, but if you bring a canned good for Project Topeka, it's only a dollar. So for a suggested donation. So, and then on November 23rd, we have our 5K run that the Sunflower State Games is putting on to benefit wow. Tark. And it will start at Reynolds Lodge and you get to, you will run, the course takes you through with the lights twice and the lights will be on and it is in the evening. Uh, registration st starts at four and the run starts at 5.30. You can also access the registration piece online at sunflowergames.com. So they are doing that for the second year for us and it's gonna be pretty cool. You guys have really just grown this into something that the whole community can be proud of. That's what we're hoping. And yeah. we want people to know that, you know, we are serious about what we do and even in the financial challenges that we have right now, the people we serve and the programs that we provide for them, nothing nothing will happen to that. It's going to continue to, just like it is. It's not, you know, the funding cuts will not affect them. So that's our promise to them. Well, you guys are certainly doing your part to make it a wonderful event. And now you guys can do your part. So get out here to Lake Shawnee and check out Winter Wonderland for TARC. <laughs>